Ivan Banol. Hello from Mongolia. Hey guys, I uh, have a little bit of time before I meet with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and so I wanted to do a very quick podcast, or what is it, whatever it's called, uh, Periscope, uh, to just uh, talk about a few things that have been creeping up over the days. Uh, first off, I get a lot of questions about my travel, and uh, you can see I am traditional Mongolian gear. I was out in the steppes riding horses, and yesterday riding camels, and playing around with falcons and eagles, which is always fun. Uh, but these trips have a, really a purpose for uh, IOHK or the Cardano ecosystem, and I felt like I should spend a few moments talking about these trips. Uh, so I generally take three types of trips uh, when I travel abroad. Uh, the first case is the simplest, where a conference invites me or I'm attending a major event. Uh, so I go there, deliver a speech, a lot of business development, networking, and these types of things. Uh, now, the uh, other option is that uh, we have an office in that area, or IOHK has some personnel in that area, and so we tend to spend a great deal of time uh, talking to our personnel as well, so we'll split it into two groups. Uh, second, I tend to take trips where uh, I go on vacation, and when I do that, like recently I went to Hawaii about uh, four months ago or so, uh, I don't tend to post things on Twitter, and I'm not actually working when I go there. Every now and then somebody sees me and takes a picture, but you'll see my activity goes down a bit, and that's a true vacation. Uh, or third, we have what's called a country opening trip, and a country opening trip is like what we're doing here in Mongolia, where uh, we network with uh, local Bitcoiners and blockchain groups on the ground, uh, the government, local businesses, uh, and basically we go for a meet and greet. So we actually do a meetup group, uh, we meet with accelerators, uh, we talk to government officials from members of parliament to foreign ministers, uh, to the local university partners, and we learn a huge amount of stuff, uh, namely what is the business environment like, uh, what's the regulation like, uh, who's in charge of things, uh, how many blockchain companies are there, uh, are these companies profitable, are they doing ICOs, is there liquidity, uh, if people hold cryptocurrencies, where did they buy them at, how did they buy them. Uh, the best way to learn answers to these questions and get real information is simply just to go and ask people. It takes a few days, uh, you usually get a lot of great experiences, you usually meet a lot of wonderful people. Uh, I've never ridden a Mongolian horse before, uh, so it's a heck of a lot of fun. Now, on the back of that, almost always, it's uh, open the jurisdiction for future business. So we usually see Cardano-related meetup groups form. Uh, we usually see a local exchanges want to list ADA. Uh, we see a lot of opportunities for pilots. In fact, there's already one local partner that wants to host a pilot with us to do a IoT venture in Q1, Q2 of next year. Uh, they have all these beautiful little devices that they've created uh, to do everything from measure power consumption to air quality uh, to uh, moisture and uh, other such things, and they want to reconcile these things on a blockchain. So that's the nature of the third type of trip. We've done it in Vietnam. Uh, we've done it in Ethiopia. We've done it in Rwanda. We've done it in South Africa. Uh, and it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of networking. It's a little bit of meeting key people. South Africa, we were at the president's ranch, president of the country, uh, with the president's son. And uh, we had a lot of great conversations about what is the cheap political environment of uh, the blockchain space and uh, basically who's doing what where. And this opened up all kinds of opportunities for us in Angola, Uganda, and throughout a, a pan-African side that was just simply not possible until we went there. So I do take great umbrage to people seeing pictures of me on Twitter saying, oh, he's not working, it's a vacation. Uh, these are very difficult trips. They're very long trips. They take a tremendous amount of time and effort. Uh, they also involve a huge amount of uh, formalism uh, and uh, a lot of clienting. So uh, I love these things because they're enriching and they're exciting and they're fun, but they're very challenging. And let's be clear that they're very challenging. So that's the, uh, the first point. So anyway, I'll be in Mongolia for a few more days, a few more meetings to have. We have university meetings tomorrow and uh, more members of the government to meet with and uh, local blockchainers to meet with. We already had one event uh, t uh, yesterday, and um, that event was quite successful. And uh, we were able to talk to a few hundred people about what the environment is like. Uh, and moving forward, we're just going to keep making uh, trips like this happen. Okay, second thing I'd like to mention is the recent audit report that the Cardano Foundation released on 
the dependencies that we used with the Haskell code base. Uh, this was tremendously puzzling to me because of two reasons. One, uh, the code that we currently have in the Cardano SL repo uh, is being replaced and heavily refactored and dependencies are being dropped, uh, architectural changes are being made. So if you look at the arc of development for Cardano, there are really three phases in the development. So the first phase was a liquidity phase where we contracted a firm called Serakel, and they made a lot of design decisions and they built a cryptocurrency based on some business requirements we gave with some supervision. Now, this code and this currency constructed was a proof of concept that could teach the organization how to actually launch a product, how to get on exchanges, how to get a wallet working, how to build QA processes, how to build a help desk. It's tremendously complicated to do that with a distributed team. It was never meant to be long-term code that would be in production for years. Now, we have a methodology to produce long-term code that will be in production for years. And how that's done is we write a formal executable specification. From that specification, we write some prototypes. From those prototypes, we eventually write code, and then we can apply tooling like quick check and fuzzing and perhaps even by simulation. Now, this is an order of magnitude more complicated. It involves a lot of really complicated engineering work, deep work, a lot of focus, uh, and the types of engineers who do this and the types of tools you use to do this are distinctly different from the types of tools you'd use to write a web application or a cell phone application. Now, we've spent over two years as an organization building a formal methods group, working with great firms like Twig and WellTyped who have formal methods capabilities, interfacing with academia, with people like Manuel Chavardi and Phil Wadler and others, who have long established careers in the formal methods and programming language world. Uh, and we've built uh, quite a bit of capacity at IOHK to use this type of technique. And we have utilized this type of technique as a proof of concept with the wallet backend. So if you go to Cardano Docs, uh, you can see the formal UTXO specification that we wrote. We prototyped it, and it's been implemented, and the implementation's near done, and we're just polishing it and it will be deployed with Cardano 1.4. And we're just about for Shelly to take delegation, Ouroboros Genesis, and a litany of other components of the system and do exactly what we just did for the wallet backup, leveraging all the knowledge, experience, and expertise and acceleration that we gain. That means we start with a beautiful, clean design surface. All the legacy decisions that were made can be retired. Dependencies can be analyzed again when we can use the minimal amount of them and that we can have the most secure, fastest code base. Now, to me, it makes absolutely no sense then when you have uh, that philosophy to audit the old code because it's going to be replaced and it was made by a vendor who no longer works for IOHK and is no longer writing code for IOHK. Why would you waste time, effort, and community money to do something like that? We don't understand, and these reports don't seem to have a lot of value. Second, there are two other code bases that we're actively working on, one of which was 100%, actually both, were 100% developed by IOHK in our engineering teams and our processes. First, there's the Icarus slash Prometheus code base, which was created by Team Borbaki and the ATIX team. Now, this code was written from the ground up, uses modern web technologies, works very well and beautifully in Chrome, and it also uses Rust and compiles to WebAssembly. And we've tested it on the cell phone, and there's already people who are porting it to run on Android and iOS clients. We built this code in record time. The actual planning only took a month or two, and the actual deployment of it was less than six months. It's been security audited. On the Rust side, I believe we're less than 12,000 lines of code, and it's rapidly evolving to parity with our current code base. We have a lot of things we brought half size uh, addresses, sequential index uh, HD wallets, two-minute wallet restores with the way that we modeled Icarus. Uh, and we're very excited to see Uroi come out, uh, Amergo's client. As soon as address discrimination uh, passes, they're going to do that. That wasn't uh, audited at all. There was no discussion of that. Maybe it's because that's good engineering. So uh, there's that. On the Cardano CL side, we used our Mantis code base, which, again, is about 15,000 lines of code. Uh, there's a significant test coverage. It's been security audited as well. Uh, it's used in production with Ethereum Classic. 
And that's a phenomenal code base. And with only a small team of engineers, less than five, we were able to modularize it to make consensus and the virtual machine pluggable. And we've launched two test nets, the KEVM test net and the Yella test net. Now, those test nets are operational. We've been able to rapidly refactor them to improve the command line interface, Mallet. We've been able to refactor them to fix some bugs and things here and there. And RV seems to be quite happy with this as a testing surface so that they can continue to innovate with Yella. And uh, frankly, you could launch a cryptocurrency off of that code base, and it would be as good as Ethereum. It's quite competitive. And we stand by it. We're very proud of it. And it costs very lo little money to maintain, and the technical debt is low. We're using Scala Check, uh, heavy use of Akka. Uh, there's just a lot of magical things there, and we're very proud of that. So I'm proud of my engineers. I'm proud of what our company does. Uh, Cardano is a product that is constructed by many companies. Uh, just off the top of my head, uh, WellType, Twig, Cuvic. We work with Allied Testing, Runtime Verification, uh, us and others. So it's, it's hard to imagine how you can just have a single scope narrow audit and say that's a representative sample of where we're at, where the project is going. Now, in the interest of transparency, we are going to do a lot of videos on Prometheus and where the direction and roadmap of Prometheus is, including a new explorer and uh, what Cardano 1.5 is going to look like. And our hope is it can help people resolve some of their issues that they have with the existing wallet. There's a lot of magical things coming with Daedalus, which is, again, a very high-quality code base. It has great test coverage. It tends to discover a lot of bugs that we have. Uh, and uh, we also are going to do some videos specifically about Shelly and specifically about this formal methods approach that we've refined over the last two years and why we feel it's going to allow us to move very quickly, why we feel it's going to allow us to move with very few bugs, and why we feel it's going to allow us to deliver a great product to market that will have these wonderful native assets. They're called chimeric assets. It's going to have extended UTXO. We're going to roll out Plutus and sidechains and Ouroboros Genesis. And we'll have a phenomenal foundation to be able to roll in Ouroboros Hydra, state channels, and a litany of other things, such as our multi-party computation research that we've done out of Tokyo Institute of Technology, and do so in a way with strong security guarantees, strong performance guarantees, simulation before we actually write the full thing so we know what it's going to look like when we deploy it, and world-class testing developed at companies like Cuvic, some of the best computer scientists in the world. So my company, my engineers take what we do very seriously. We take transparency very seriously. We're audited all the time. Kadelsky is one firm that we work with very closely, and when they finish the reports, we release them. And we really do enjoy working with a lot of our partners, such as Amergo with Yeroy, and watching third-party people like the Infinite to Wallet, Fractalide and others take what we've constructed, fork it, and find meaningful use in it. Mantis alone has been forked and is currently used in two separate cryptocurrency projects that have no commercial relationship with us. So that's a bit about what we do as an engineering company and uh, how we proceed as an engineering company. Uh, so anyway, uh, to the community, IOHK is just going to continue doing what it does best. We're going to continue doing world-class research, continue doing world-class engineering. Uh, we're going to try to make more video content. We've hired a product marketer on our end. We're also starting to staff community management on our end. We think that there's a lot of work that needs to be done, globally speaking, with community management. And our hope is that we can enhance community management moving forward. And our hope is we can have a better strategy as an ecosystem for community management. It's a bit disheartening to me when I get hundreds of emails from people all around the world who really do want to launch great products and really do want to do a lot for the Cardano ecosystem. And right now, there's not a clear place for them to execute from. There are some reasons for that, i.e. we don't support smart contracts yet or user-issued assets. So you have to wait a little bit for capabilities of the platform to grow. But within just a few months, we are going to start seeing these capabilities rolled out gradually. And uh, it's going to go very quickly. We're going to wake up and we'll be the industry leader in terms of capabilities, performance, security, and uh, ease of use. So as a consequence, it's extremely important that we proactively, as a community, begin having aggressive discussions about how do we include more people, how do we see more productive meetup groups, how do we start teaching people about Plutus and Yella, uh, and how do we start proactively getting things done on the development side uh, 
you know, getting developers involved and uh, building dApps and these types of things and getting projects into the ecosystem. I think our best days are ahead of us, and I think 2019 is going to be a very competitive year. Uh, so anyway, uh, IOHK is vested in this ecosystem very heavily. Uh, this is my life's work, and Cardano will be a success one way or another. I will continue working on it until it is. So it doesn't really matter what we, an engineering company, have to do. If we have to go above and beyond our remit, we will do so. If we have to hire lots of community managers, we will do so. Because it's what needs to get done, and it's incredibly important. So Cardano's best days are ahead of it. I think we have a lot of magical things coming out. Our research is world class. We're extremely excited about it. And we know how to open up marketplaces, and we're doing a great job there. And we're going to open up a lot of marketplaces in 2019. So thank you guys all for listening. I'll uh, see everyone in Japan for the FinSum Summit, and uh, hopefully we'll have some great regulatory conversations there, especially with the FSA, and understand more about what the regulatory environment is in Japan as we enter 2019 and what is required for liquidity. And I really look forward to future events throughout the year. November, I'll be in Malta, and I'll also be in Switzerland. Uh, and uh, December, uh, hopefully I'll be all throughout the world. I think it's going to be very, very busy. I will take a slight vacation there. I'm going to NFR. It's the Super Bowl of rodeos, and that's going to be fun. So thank you all for listening, uh, and uh, talk to you guys soon.